Hello, my name is Miguel Arnaiz and this is the INTEF course on Digitally Competent Educational Organizations. I'm going to talk about the impact of technology on the curriculum, the objectives and the contents from an organizational point of view. An actual implementation of technologies in the educational context involves the overall reinterpretation of the curriculum within the organization. But what does that mean, though? It means that we have to rethink all the components of the teaching and learning experience in schools from the perspective of the current social and technological situation. In general, this means shaping a more inclusive curriculum. We have to think of how the decisions we make curriculum-wise impact on our school's educational project. The name differs depending on the legislation and whether this is cross and transdisciplinary. The curriculum should ensure that the learning and assessment experience focuses on student needs and skills and exploits the multimodal reality we live in when addressing the contents. This way of understanding the curriculum entails more flexibility of the basic parameters of a school organization. Time, spaces and schedules should be adapted in order to have some margin to include other activities or collaborate among the different subjects topics and competencies that should be developed. Furthermore, even if this option is not as well provided for as it should be in our education system, we shouldn't rule out the possibility of offering completely online options that would allow flexible access to basic compulsory education to certain groups with specific needs. Redesigning the curriculum using technology implies creating teaching and learning experiences that exploit the potential of expanded teaching. This can make teaching and learning experiences much more authentic, broaden the context and make the participants, students and teachers feel more engaged precisely because of the authenticity of the experience. When redesigning the curriculum according to the current technology situation, we should clearly have in mind the image of digitally competent students. Digitally competent students are capable of efficiently facing the world we live in with all the particular features that it, it has due to technology. Also, they have to take advantage of the possibilities that technology offers in order to enrich their learning process. So far, we have been teaching about the curriculum in generic terms. From now on though, we will address two specific key elements of the curriculum, objectives and contents. Let's talk about the objectives first. In a digitally competent organization, learning objectives should be defined focusing on competencies in the most comprehensive, social and contextualized set, sense of the concept. The goal is not to create students able to echo contents, but rather to educate individuals that will be able to make informed and ethically and technically desirable decisions in complex situations. Thus, digitally competent schools focus on this approach on competent individuals when they organize teaching and learning experiences. There is another key element that we have to focus on in our digitally competent educational organization, contents. Contents encompass all the educational resources that we use to support our teaching efforts with an emphasis on digital contents. In the current technological situation, it is imperative to remember that the development of technology allowed students to become creators of content. They have become what we used to call at the beginning of the 80s prosumers. That is, not only do they consume contents that others create, but they also create contents setting the reality they live in. In fact, how to make the most of the contents we create within the institution is one of the greatest challenges that we current educational organizations face. Furthermore, our institutions should take advantage of the contents that have already been classified and stored and are available online. The goal is to be able to efficiently turn to online information repositories because we can surely find contents of great quality there. When we talk about digital contents, we shouldn't only think of visual presentations, teaching units, revised class notes and materials. There are plenty of those, but we should also think of collections of learning materials, resource lists, software and application updates. All of them have already been classified and we have them at our disposal. Therefore, there is no need to keep reinventing the wheel. We can simply improve the already existing contents, remixing them or changing them with our input and revisions. 
When we create contents, we have to be aware that there are ways of allowing others to use them under specific conditions. This implies knowing and properly using the licenses for the reuse of information that are available to us for both giving others permission to use our contents and using other people's contents adequately. We should prioritize the creation and use of open educational resources and generate a climate of respect for intellectual property based on an open approach on producing and using knowledge. It is not a question of placing a special emphasis of, on what is legal and what is not, but rather on learning basic rules of coexistence in terms of creating contents and using other people's materials. It is important to be aware of the options we have. On one hand, we can control and use what other people make of our content when we share them. And on the other hand, we have the opportunity to be respectful with the decision that other people made with respect to the use of their contents. And how can we achieve this? It is imperative to have a shared vision and a strong leadership in order to establish an approach on the curriculum and to make organizational decisions. Furthermore, reaching an agreement between all the members of the school is also required in order to move forward. Thus, one of the first steps we should take is to open an in-depth dialogue to help us make real changes that will go beyond just renaming concepts, like for instance, objectives or goal, subjects or subject areas, etc. The organization has to put together some procedures and a certain dynamic related to the use and creation of digital contents, preferably open ones. This includes, for instance, creating specific spaces to exhibit them in the institution itself, promoting, using and sharing these contents within the school and outside, and promoting the contents outside the institution. The contents created in school should be acknowledged, not only the physical ones which we traditionally exhibit on walls, but also the new multimodal ones which we make in schools with the help of technology. These contents need a place of their own where we can display them. In addition to promoting the contents we create within our school, it is also important to promote resources that others have shared. It would be, wrong, it would be wonderful if an organization could have access to an institutional content exchange program or to a larger public repository, or even if it could create its own repository. These types of actions could help the, promotional, the promotion of digital contents and open educational resources.